to order. Um, <clears throat> our first agenda item is open forum. I know Jim's got something for open forum. Go ahead. All right. I was down at um, the Williams Avenue Beach the uh, day right after the right after Independence Day holiday, and going through some of the trails there, I, I stumbled across this. Uh, I didn't know what it was at the time. Some kind of a device. It had a high pressure gas you know, gas tank of some sort. A 12 volt looked like a motorcycle battery wired to it, and a looked like a light over the whole thing and some other little tubular device. I didn't know what it was. I didn't take it. I didn't touch it. So I took a picture of it, and, I, and Matt will run the picture up here, and I'll tell you the rest of the story after the picture. So it's right off the trail, as you can see. There's the gas tank, the battery. Wow. I didn't Is that touch a trap? it. And then over beside it looked like a roll of toilet paper with a red stripe on it. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> and then above it, something that looked like a lamp. Personal use. I had no idea what it was. So I stepped back, took a video, stepped back, called the Western Police. They sent a patrolman down. He didn't know what it was. He called the sergeant down. And eventually, somebody went in there and flipped that thing over that you can see in the video now. And on the bottom of it, it's the Central Massachusetts Mosquito Control Program Mosquito Trap. <laughs> so I went on their website. Um, they put these things all over the place in Central Mass, but they don't tell anybody where they put them. They don't want people to know because people will steal them or vandalize them. But I, I think this is just asking for trouble with uh, kids yeah. walking through the trail. You know, you don't want to give kids high-pressure gas tanks to play with. Right. Or well, you said it was right off. It wasn't really yeah. disguised in any way. It was right off the, the video. Trail. It's yeah. about maybe seven or eight feet from the trail. And that's it. And you could see it easily from the trail. So the police called Mask Mosquito Control on uh, July 5th, and they haven't picked it up yet. Matt called them um, Monday, Monday morning sometime? Yes, Monday morning. Monday morning, and they still haven't picked it up. It's still there this afternoon. Um, I don't mind if they put them in that patch of woods, but not right next to the trail. It's got to be someplace out of sight so it won't, won't be bothered. Um, so we've got to call into them. They should be moving it now. And I would hope that if they're going to put stuff on our property in the, in the future that we hear about it. Yep. Yeah, I spoke to, I called, when I got into the office Monday morning, called um, the, uh, called the, direct line um, on their website spoke with somebody they said they'd be taking it out of that location out of rotation out of their rotation um, again explaining Jim's concerns and um, also uh, requesting that they do you know when they do want to set up these traps I mean please let us know if it's going to be on our property um, just so we're aware of it yeah, I don't have an object, objection to doing it but I would like to have it farther away from trails or from heavily used areas that's what I, for. I don't. I have no idea. What I think that's. I think that's. What, I think there's a fan in there of some sort that blows the mosquitoes to a, to a netting or something. It looks like toilet paper, but I don't know okay. really what it is. I didn't touch it. I just left. Okay. Anybody else have anything from the commission? Matt. Um. The the highway department regraded um, the access road up to the camps at uh, Stony Brook Conservation Area today. Um, there were two medical incidents the, where fire and the ambulance had to go up. Um, and I think after the first one and the rains on Friday and Monday, I think, really did a number. Uh, yeah. And they were in pretty poor shape. But I, I drove up Monday morning in my own personal car and um, was kind of alarmed and wanted to wait to see after all the puddles, uh, the water subsided, so I could actually see the extent of the uh, puddling, or the actual uh, potholes, as opposed to just seeing the resulting puddle. Um, and like I said, they were up there, so they regraded it. And I appreciate the highway department for getting out there um, as quick as they did. I know um, the uh, fire department was uh, alarmed by the potholes. And yeah, they was that this morning? Because we heard them racing. Yeah, that was, that was this morning. It actually wasn't in bad shape before the before we had all these rains. Yeah, they were. I, I really was kind of in. I mean, they were holding up pretty well with all the vehicle traffic, right. especially with um, both camps going full steam right now. Yeah. So I was, um, uh, and I, both uh, camp directors kind of made comments about how all the parents dropping off were, you know 
complaining about how bumpy it was and all the potholes. And well, I, while it is a camp road, and I know Jim and Peter, I was looking back at old minutes. You know, it was back from 2019. Yeah, this was yeah. a this was a similar refrain. Yeah. This was a no similar sorry. refrain back in 2019. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I I th you know, it's all, if, it's all level now. Yeah, it's it's graded out, um, and yeah, you know, yeah. that's been a. Uh, a similar song and dance or a song to the uh, both camp directors is to make sure that you know remind the parents dropping off that too it is a 10 mile per hour speed limit and you know if you're not actively paying attention you can go you know you can go much faster so always keep it slow okay uh, anything for open form from the uh, audience okay seeing none we'll move on to our first agenda item <clears throat> which is a public hearing for Murphy, 16 Farmhouse Road, 2341766. It's a legal notice under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Wetlands Non-Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. The Western Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, July 14th, 2021 at 7.35 p.m., meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, on the notice of the tenant application of James and Ann Murphy for the construction of a patio, retaining wall, and trench drain within 100 feet of jurisdictional wetland at 16 Farmhouse Road, assesses map 44, parcel 40, lot 9. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us about your project. Well, we always had an affinity or a love for that pond. We used to bring my children there when it used to be Wyman's <laughs> Pond. And so last year in June, my wife said, we should look and see what they have to offer there. And we looked and we loved, we loved the area. And we picked out a house that we loved, particularly loved because of the location. We thought it was nice open land behind it. And then subsequently, after we moved in, we found that we had a drainage problem where the water was coming right under the house and it was flowing through the house, comes in halfway down the home and then comes under to the center of the home and then out the other side halfway down. And so they're on still, the homes are on stilts, and so some people said, well, you know, it's above, but then we found that the water also collects and it doesn't always come out and get back to where it's supposed to go. There's, there is a trench, a drainage trench right at the end of it. And so my wife and I had a heart set on having a, a nice little place with walk and a small place to sit out back, and we decided, well, in order to do this, that we should just bite the bullet and do whatever's necessary to do it the right way and uh, correct the, the problem. So we were working with Bob Nolay, who's my contractor on this, and uh, he's worked in this town for a long time and we felt that that would be the correct path to go and tell us how to go about it, what we should do, and how can we achieve what we need in order to be happy in our new home. So that's kind of where we got to, and uh, I, I chronicled flood waters under it all last year and whatnot, and, and talked a little bit with the uh, committee, and my wife and I finally decided we might as well just we'll do what we should do, do it the way we should do, and we'll take responsibility for mitigating the water coming out of under the house. So that's the drain across the front. The recommendation was, and we've had a couple of engineers look at it, the recommend, actually a few, but the recommendation was to put, uh, I guess they call it a French drain across the front, yep. because yep. any water that might come in was coming in across that area. And so if we start way up where we're starting at the far end and bring it down almost to the drainage ditch, I think, I think almost, or just about to the drainage ditch, maybe even into the wall of it, that that would, uh, because it's a perforated pipe and because it's all gravel above it, and that would take care of uh, mitigating our uh, water damage, which then I felt then it would be worthwhile to put in the nice walk that my wife and I had hoped to put across the front and down the side, and then we really wanted a, a sitting area, and that's a very nice private area. It's on the private side of our house, away from any neighbors. Uh, and so that's kind of our story and where we are and what we're attempting to get permission from the board to allow us to do. Okay. So you say the water is coming in this direction and this French drain here is going to catch the water that's coming into the drain and then it's going to dump it into the swale here? 
if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, actually, sir, the water's coming down Farmhouse Row. Yeah, okay. So the, the elevation's pretty high yeah, up top there. Yeah, 12 to 210, so it's yep. coming down the road, yeah. Yep, and what it's doing is instead of going to the end of the road and going into the ditch, uh, what it's doing is taking a hard left and going underneath their yeah, cottage. Okay. 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 Um, what is on the ground where the, uh, where the trench is going to start? Is that grass? No, uh, that's gravel. That's right now it's there. gravel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much like the edge of the road, and it's all gravel. The whole road is gravel. Um, what material would you be using between the pavers in terms of um, would, for allowing rainwater and stuff to permeate into the ground? For what we have planned right now uh, was just your average run-of-the-mill pavers with poly sand in the... But so not... But but the sand but, but sand it wouldn't be like yes it's sand, sand underneath sand. and it's poly sand it's the whole thing in purby exactly okay right. yep okay um, one of the things I'd like to see on the plan which we usually see on the plan is when there are patios and stuff is just what the dimensions are because in reviewing a plan that just kind of makes it easier to understand the scale of stuff so. that somewhere it should be on one of the drawings I believe uh, and it, what I was doing was just looking at the plan that was provided so. Um, so it's a 1 to 20 scale, so is it accurate that way? Let's see. I can't remember off the top it's of my head. It's fairly accurate. I don't know if I reprinted one of yours at, okay. uh, and it might have gotten. This might, this might, what do you think? I think this one will do it. No, it doesn't not say it on that one. And, yeah. and it just, it's not so much for this hearing, but it's more in terms of making sure that um, the file for the project is complete and has all the information if somebody comes back to look at it. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm thinking this is something that we'd approve, so. Yeah, yeah I, but it's just to have it in the record yeah. of what the dimensions are. That's normally what we see when a, a, pro a proposal like this comes forward, so. I don't have any trouble. Yeah. Looks like it's about 20 by 15. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's 15 by, yeah. 15 by okay. 20. That's based but on the scale. Yeah. Down. Yeah, we had a, and I think there's been a lot of paperwork associated with this, and I believe that we had submitted drawings. Uh, you don't have to yeah. have it tonight because no, we we'll still have to continue have to do okay, that's issue right. another. Yeah. So we just need okay. it for the file when yeah. we, when yeah, we complete so, so the project. We've got we've got a complete you know. So if somebody comes back and looks at the file, it's very clear this is what was proposed and all the information's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sure. Thank you. So the dimension yeah. of the patio and the the, thick, the dimension of the uh, walkway around Walk, walkways as well. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you could sign in just on the uh, sure. meeting sheet just for the minutes taker. Yeah, but other than that, I don't see any issues with what's being proposed. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, where's um, I'm assuming there's off the road um, parking, and I just um, is that between units number 14 and 16 in terms of where you would the um, the the unit owner would would park the car? Uh, we park the car. Two cars. The spot uh, allocated spot is right at the end of the road. Okay. And and it's uh, two cars fit right at the very end of the road. So where the 206 elevation marker is. Yes. Okay. I was just, you know. Yeah, it, and we, we do put a golf cart on the side of the road, but there's okay. all piece stone and down. 14 there. and 16 as well. Yeah. Okay. But the whole place is golf carts in here. Yeah. We're not <laughs> kidding. <laughs> well. If you don't have a golf cart, I mean, you're, you're not welcome, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so we were talking, the, right before we bought a little garage, and fell under the house, because the gravel's all being, <coughs> excuse me, Eroded. washed away by the water. It's yeah. kind of dangerous. Yeah. Big hole mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions from the commission? Any questions from the audience on this application? Okay, seeing none, we'll uh, continue this at our uh, July 28th meeting. At uh, eight fifteen, should we? We should be in a position though to be able to close an issue. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Good to go.
Thank two you. weeks we'll issue the order you don't have to be here he'll what would you oh, uh, yep, i'll send you the draft yep. special excellent and so the only thing you'd like to have for the file is the dimensions dimensions, dimensions. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I know we have it i'm okay. just not very good at finding it right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's for the plane in the file not for this discussion okay Good. Well, thank you very, very much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you. Hope the rain stops. <coughs> Boy, yeah. every day but one this year. <laughs> we had four grandkids calling us saying, hey, can we come up tomorrow? We think it's going to stop raining. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks once again. Thank you. That's on tonight, maybe. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to move on to our 745, which is a public hearing for... Um, co coaches, 34, Forge Village Road. It's a legal notice in Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act. Wetlands Notice on the Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171, Western Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, July 14th, 2021 at 7.45 p.m. Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, on the request of determination of applicability, application of James and Laura Cotis, am I saying? Cotis, you had it right. Cotis. Okay. For the construction of a shed size 10 by 14 or smaller on an existing lawn area with 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland at 34 Forge Village Road. Assessed map 20, parcel 62. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. So just give us a brief description of what you want to do. Yeah, basically a little storage challenge. Three-year-old, a two-year-old, and the toys are already building up and overflowing into things. <laughs> okay. Um, We've got kind of, if you if you look at the, the, I'm trying to think, I think easement is the term to use, that you can go off of the road, and then you look at the, the area that you have to defer away from the wetlands, there's probably like three, three to five feet <laughs> between the two lines um, that we could possibly fit the shed. So the, the place to keep it as best we can away from everything and, and just kind of off into a corner is where you see it there, which is on a corner of a fence line. Um, we've got a picture that kind of shows where exactly it would sit. Uh, Matt, does that laser pointer work on the I was, uh, yellow button? The yeah, yellow yeah, button? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The point in the middle was the laser pointer. There you go. I didn't want to point work. I was afraid yeah. I was going to end up pointing it. <laughs> Some technology. And you've got the measurements from the house out to yeah, the yeah. corner mm -hmm. of it, right? Uh, laser laser. That original drawing. Right. Sorry, this is my first uh, soiree into this kind of thing, so. It's okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> On the ones I sent in, it actually was supposed to be highlighted yellow, but it looks like it didn't come through. It didn't scan. So the red yeah. is a shed. It's a shed. It's a shed. Yep. Okay. The, the intent is to have a gravel base underneath it, so <clears> not to, you know, nothing permanent that would um, prevent water or let water build up around the outside of it, around the edges of it. Um, the corner of the house allows me to run an extension cord if I need to do something in there. It requires power that way. I don't have to run any kind of permanent thing out there. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just basically going to be a wooden shed. Not on sauna tubes or cinder blocks or what's? I'm assuming something's keeping it off the ground. My thought was we were just going to do. You know, you see the ones advertised and you know Reed's Ferry and various other companies where it's just three ground-approved four by fours underneath resting on the gravel. Okay. So it wouldn't actually be dug into the ground or posted so, in the ground. So I left the level. Line. Okay, so there wouldn't be supports at the corner. There would be these three things that it's balanced on. That's the intent, but I, I need a shed expert to tell me that's the right answer. But I believe that's what I've seen most commonly that's around. Right. Okay. There is a shed the neighbor has around the back there that looks like he's got columns, like you described. Okay. Um, the, yeah, the only thing that I was looking for looking at this plan that we usually see is what would be the closest distance to the wetland so that we have that as a benchmark. So I was out there this afternoon and or just as a aside, are you going to remove the um, s uh, slide and yes, okay. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was like, what, what are you what are you, what are you accumulating here at the, at the deconstructed the, swing set that, you know, one of the many projects when you have a three yeah. and two year old that needs to get from there. No, okay. The, just wanted to make sure that that was in the. No, that's not yeah, a permanent that's, fixture. That is not a permanent uh, addition now. Um, but I pulled tape on it, and it's about 33, 34 feet. Okay. Too. And that's just like with the previous one. It's just it's nice to see the measurement on the plan, sure. so it's in the file. And if somebody comes back and looks at it, it's it's kind of there, and it's very clear what was intended. And he's sitting on existing lawn. So. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be storing any sort of chemicals in there? No, we, any kind of fuel or anything would be up in the garage, which is yeah. the, in the main, it's attached to the house. 
that would basically be to store <clears throat> big wheels, stuff like that, lawn equipment. My, my lawnmower would park in there. Um, so I guess if there was anything in the tank there, there would be something in there. Um, right. Not a place for a snowblower, though. Mm -hmm. Not really, because it wouldn't be. A, when yeah, I, it's, <laughs> I'd have to snow blow my way out and around the yeah, house and <laughs> get to the driveway. Yeah, it defeats the purpose. He's done something like that for the dogs before through the yes, backyard. Yes, I had so. to dig them past first year here, but <laughs> his was extensive. Yes, <laughs> they had when I was done. It's as long as we have, you know, we know it's at least 33, 35, yep. whatever it is. Then you know I'm good with this. Okay. Well, in a thought too, I can move it further towards the house. If, if that makes it more well, digestible. That, that was going to be my comment was if the commission wants to condition it um, for me to review the site prior to install, you know, sure. the exact location. Because sure. again, you're not sure on size, you're not sure on short. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you may no, be, be smaller, fine. so we can. Yep, that would work for me. That would work. Okay. And I think we didn't have that measure to the wetlands because it's somewhere in the greenery yeah, that and starts. So, yeah. yeah. But, and it's the kind of thing that visits with Matt. Well, you can, know you're going to be a minimum of 33, 35 feet away, and it could be more. So, sure. Yeah. Short of this monsoon year, there's actually a little bit of time where that, that no. thing actually dries completely okay. out, like the late August time frame, normally. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Any Which questions? Love sheds. Which dogs love sheds? I know. Oh, good. I can't wait. And my dogs are going to love that the turkeys too. Okay. And the deer and the stumps. I'm going to my yard right now about yay big. They're great. <laughs> Tooling around. Yeah, I can't wait for the critters. We had a skunk that lived all summer, last summer with us. In the backyard, yeah. yes. Made for nice mud puddles for the kids to squish their toes in. <laughs> okay, any questions bees. from the audience on this? They eat ticks. They, I, I love them. But I like that. Yeah. Just not in the yard when the kids are in the yard. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no. We're good. So can I have a uh, motion to have a conditional negative? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, you're all set. Matt Hill, we'll have to write, write it up and we'll get the distance. Do we need to close the closure? Yes. Okay. Yep, yeah, we'll close it. Just checking. So, but you, you still need to follow up before you write it up, though. Yep. Okay, with that information. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Appreciate it. Aye. 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 Thank you. Didn't wait for the vote. Sorry. 755. That one's not here yet. Take care. Have a good night. Good night. Okay, so we're going to move on to our um, 755, which is a uh, continuation of a public hear hearing issue order conditions for McWade at 5 Daniels Drive. Uh, no, no, I spoke with the I, I spoke with the representative um, today. Okay. I sent them the good. conditions. They were fine with it. Awesome. Um, Works for me. They had my comments. Any changes from the commission? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the order of conditions? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we got ten minutes. Okay, uh, let's go to discussion items. Ratify emer emergency certificate for Beach Beaver Dam and installation of a flow control device down on Vinebrook Road. I have to recuse myself because so I'm, I'm a one. member of the Vinebrook Trust. So, do we have anybody here? Uh, no, I can write this. I can okay. uh, explain this. Um, back in the beginning of May, I think. Um, the Vinebrook Trust reached out to our office and Board of Health. Um, there was a, a beaver dam that has been installed on um, across Neshoba Brook, um, past the um, the well field, the former well fields um, in that area, and the Board of Health, you know, it was impacting a person's property, <laughs> so the Board of Health was able to issue their approval. I was looking to issue the emergency certificate then, but because that portion of Neshoba Brook is uh, mapped habitat for natural heritage, I wanted to make sure the, um, the, the project proponents reached out to Mass Division of uh, Fisheries and Wildlife 
um, their natural heritage program to make sure that any work in you know it, even though you know it's installing a flow device and I just wanted to make sure that it was reviewed by um, the state program prior to um, issuing the emergency certificate um, the emergency the their determination was included in the packet and so I'm ready to sorry and they conditioned it because of habitat for Blanding's turtle yep and I mean they also comment on wood turtle but I didn't I was surprised to see wood turtle habitat being listed um, but that was also um, Kate found a wood turtle down there a couple of years ago. really oh, well, well, awesome that'll do it <laughs> um, so they were um, conditioned between uh, April mid-April and mid-October I forget the 15th 16th one of Used. Um, but that was the just for the those playing along at home. Um, the that was the one condition, you know, to avoid a prohibited take of state listed species. Um, so they, since they did find that the work would actually um, was occurring within the actual habitat, um, they. So we can approve it subject to the condition. Yep, and and the condition I've, in writing it up, I have the similar conditions as previously, um, kind of on similar projects that the. So can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Matt. Welcome. Sorry, Peter. Okay. Um, 41 Hilder Street so there's a um, this is a parcel that uh, abuts the, um, the conservation trust property that goes up by the water tower it's right across the street from um, Saltbox uh, salt Farm so um, what's going to happen is they're splitting the property up and so there's a there's a house that they're going to split off and there's I forget what about eight or nine acres I think it's 11 total, um, but I don't know what I haven't seen a plan as yeah, to what they're actually plan, doing. Yeah. Uh, so they want to they want to uh, do a conservation restriction on that okay. property, and it's great because it, it abuts up the current property that's protected. Would you like me to pull up the yeah? Uh, you want to show where it is? Got a couple minutes. You don't need to turn just yet. I'm not that fast. So this is in a <laughs> this is in a in a, in a state. Um, I guess the uh, the owners had passed away, so it's in the family estate, and they need to move on this fairly quickly. I guess. Okay. Um, uplands or wetlands or what? Well, it's all uplands. It's all go. It go, all goes up the hill. Yeah. Fletcher Bruni, yep, that's the property there. 41 Hillary. Mm. It's an old name. Cow. A little slow, huh? Yeah. I haven't started this computer up in a couple months. A couple of months? <laughs> I was using this at home. <laughs> Hey, at least it's working tonight. You know, they changed, <laughs> know, the, they they changed the bulb. A, a new bulb. Oh no, no, not new. new bulb. No, what was it? New projector. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why we, blew, we blew a bulb, but, but that's they, why it's so much. It went, okay. yeah, that's, more damage than that. Peter is Bruni deceased. That that's what. Yeah, I was. I was told so. There we go. Yeah, so that's the water department tower. Yep, that's um, it. This is Saltbox Farm down here. Yep. Um, and then also this is I forget the name of the the trust property, and I think somebody from the public would like to speak. <laughs> there she is. Okay. Perfect timing. Perfect <laughs> timing. It looks like a very familiar lot. Yes, it does. <laughs> Uh, so we had just started this, uh, Ellen, and thank I, you I, I so told him the circumstances and that we wanted to Great. move fairly quickly on this. Great, thank you. Okay. 
the Land Preservation Foundation will be grateful. This was really wonderful because, you know, Bruni Fletcher, who died in March, but this is her property, had reached out to us because her neighbor, Bev Collins, who owns Saltbox Farm, had said to her, this is what I did with my land. Why don't you consider doing it with yours? So that's sort of a lovely effect. And we did show the slide, I don't know if you have it, Matt, of, you know, all of the green land that would became contiguous as a result of the Saltbox Farm. Um, acquisition and the CR on that. And uh, this doesn't even show, actually, the pageant field that uh, Priscilla Elliott gave to the uh, Westford Conservation, uh, the land trust. And so this abuts that land. And the two house lots that were part of the Valhalla Way development, which Bruni Fletcher had approved by the planning board uh, probably 25 years ago, but was never built shows that it could be uh, three house lots rather than right. the one house lot it yep. is now. So we know it's developable and it would just allow that um, additional buffer um, between her home and the other homes going south on Hildra Street to um, increase that, that size of all of the conservation land that's on Hildra Street and that's our goal. Awesome. Okay. So can I have a motion to uh, proceed with the uh, second appraisal? All in favor? Aye. 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 Superb. So um, I will let the family know that they're going to go ahead with their own appraisal. And are yes. we still on some kind of a timeline for perhaps the October town meeting if the select board considers this to be okay. a, uh, yep. a fall town meeting worthy Special. article? Yep. Great. I Sounds thank good. you so very much. We look okay. forward to working with you on this. Yep. Thank Stella. you so much. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got a couple of minutes. Picking Google Conservation Land, request to install monitoring well. Uh, so I was contacted by uh, one of the town's consultants for the um, for the perchlorate monitoring as a result of the highway department's uh, building up at, um, nearby. They wanted to inst their uh, looking to install a monitoring well on the, um, I think it's on, in the town records, it's picking conservation land east. It's um, the entrance to uh, the, the, was it Snake Road Trail? Conservation area, yeah, I think they call it, yeah. It's, it's below the actual farm. There's a very small piece of um, the conservation, uh, under the select board's control um, just before you get to Snake Meadowbrook. Snake Meadowbrook, yeah. Okay, right. so that, that is the that is the right name of that one. Um, and so they're kind of showing the approximate location, an example well, um, you know, uh, similar design and construction. Um, the licensed site professional um, put in this brief write up about why they're looking to do it, how they're doing it, um, and if the commission has any questions, concerns, any anything they'd like to add, I'd be more than happy to. Well, I like the idea of Margaret's that, you know, if you're going to have this um, three foot above ground standing steel case that's going to be locked, <clears throat> you know, put a boulder or two around it so, you know, nobody's going to inadvertently back up and, and hit that uh, steel standpipe. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's all good on this? It's all good. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve? Approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. Okay, we're going to move on to our 805, which is a continuation of a public hearing and issue or conditions for Hala, 67 Russell's Way, 3341765. Hi, come on up. Hey, good evening. If you could please just sign in just for the record. Another one that didn't scan as well as. So you had a chance to look at the orders of conditions on this? The special conditions I sent you yesterday? Oh, I didn't get that. Oh, what are we on? Oh, give them to him. Oh, to this to him. Oh. Give him mine. <laughs> the commissions have any, have any uh, questions on the orders? No, I didn't. I they were good. Yeah. Why don't you quickly just review those, the special ones?
Second. You good? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve the order conditions. So Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. You're good to go. You're okay, good. just talk to Matt. Keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Matt for helping me with this paperwork and everything. Uh, he's been incredible. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Matt. good. All right. Good, really good, good luck with your project. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Good evening. Okay, uh, request for a certificate of compliance, 58 Tinney Road, 3341732. Uh, that was um, a demolition and Reconstruction of a single family lot at the um, interesting intersection of Dunstable Road and Tenney Road. Yeah. Um, the house was into the right of the previous house was into the right of way of right. Tenney Road. Um, so it's probably they've, they've uh, the developer de demolished the house. They were able to reseed that area. They planted. Um, I forget the quantity of blueberry bushes. I think there was the um, all the plantings has been uh, done in accordance with kind of the proposed plan. Uh, the conservation signs have been installed um, around at the 50. Um, all the roof infiltration systems have been were uh, installed, and the uh, septic is wholly out of the. Uh, buffer zone. I know that was uh, something. That, yeah, that was a tricky site. Um, but all the D, all the deed language is all set. Um, so I recommend the commission issue the certificate of compliance. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Minutes. May twenty six. Commission have any changes, corrections? Um, I did have just a couple of. Oh, my goodness, that's the first one. Well, Honeymoon <laughs> couldn't be forever. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Geo yeah. mapped instead of geo map. And it, it, would, it would be one of those things that if you. I'm just teasing. Yeah. But, but the other thing <laughs> that I got. Has anything, right? But the other thing that I got off of it was out of those minutes was that the enforcement order for um, Griffin on Nutting Road was supposed to be at our uh, discussion item at our next meeting, and that just kind of fell off the radar, so we need to get it back on. Okay. I have added that to the June 20, no, nope, July 28th okay. uh, meeting agenda to follow up with the property owner and the all the various entities there um, so that we can get that uh, wrapped up and so progress can be starting to be made. Yeah, because if it was, it wasn't, if it weren't for looking at the minutes, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have kind of realized that, so. Okay, motion to approve the minutes as, as amended. As amended. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes from June 9th. On the June 9th, I don't have a problem with the minutes at all, but it does mention a topic that in the same vein as uh, Margaret had mentioned, I'd like to add it, make sure that it follows up on our agenda. It has to do with the trees that the highway department cut down in our conservation land right. on Sycamore Road. Yeah. Um, there were three mature oaks cut yep. in, in minutes. It's, it's recorded in the minutes. Three, three mature oaks were cut, but they didn't replace. So I'd like to replace them with three, three new trees. Uh, they can pick whatever type would grow next to the road, and uh, maybe put some boulders around them to protect them. Can you add that? Um, and in reading the Spalding Hill one, it was talking about the water stuff on St. Augustine, but it's really St. Paul. It's the new development, and I, you know, mm -hmm. it may be recording what Mark Schlager said, but it's it, it's kind of like what was said doesn't match what's really going to happen because they've got the wrong street name, and I just kind of no, like no. I think the work was done along St. Augustine. No, it, no. Mm -hmm. This will this will be. It's to connect to the emergency access, St. which is St. St. James, I don't remember the St. James, yeah. but it also <laughs> talked about St. James residents, and it's like, no, the residents are going to be on St. Paul, because, you know, so it just, it's, it's one of those things that what was, what was said versus what's accurate, and I didn't quite know where. So maybe we, 
Maybe the minutes reflected what was said, but maybe that's not particularly accurate. Yeah, because be. the minutes talk about residents on St. James Way, and St. James Way is an emergency access road that has no residents. So it's like, what do we do? You know, these minutes become a legal document. Well, they, they reflect what was said, what was what said but said. maybe what was said was inaccurate. Yeah. 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 So yeah. do they we reflect do we, what they say? Okay. Yeah. So we just leave it as St. James? Yes. Yes. Yes, we don't have to leave it as St. James. Okay. Okay. We, we could put a couple of sentences to yeah. with the correct information in the minutes and yeah. say they were added or during an the review process. How about like we used to do on papers with an asterisk down below? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, then, so it would show that you noted this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why, noted this this was the be residents better. will actually be on St. Paul's right. Lane. So no. it's not like it got past you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got okay. that, ma'am? Yep. Motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, June 12th. We came, we saw, we conquered. <laughs> <laughs> sort of reflection. Kind of love it. Yeah, that was a nice meeting. We're good? We're good. Motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't there. You weren't here, yeah. We missed you. You missed some exciting discussions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we didn't have any site visits. We still have four minutes, three minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hold off on the, the ZBA stuff. That might take a few minutes, right? Nothing to be signed off? Uh, yeah, you can continue yeah. the, yeah, the task task courts. 815. It's 812. 15 and 16. Yeah. But yeah, you must have stuff for us to sign right yeah, now. Yeah, we can, we can do a couple out. rounds of things to yeah. sign. Um, and the top two pages, please. have your names printed on on oh, yeah. them so if you yeah. could sign in the right place yeah. please it also means that I mean, you I, mean I can draw rich. arrows but <laughs> I'm not 100% sure how deep some people's <laughs> signatures cannot be read mine wasn't meant to be it's just a, yeah. it's it's a, a scribble I you could tell I never told you scribble <laughs> never Oh, you did. I just okay. need to put the time. The time yep. Thank you. That's. Yeah. I'm trying to try to make this as. That should be quick. So we can do 8:20 this one. Yep. Okay, we're moving on to 8:15. Continuation of public hearing. Town of Weston, 33 Robinson Road, 3341762. They requested a continuance to our July 28th meeting at 8:20. People line up at the top. I just saw. Can I have a motion to that effect? So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's a 20.
How do you call up the... Uh, These are these are different. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they were touch screen though. I forgot one thing. Oh my word! Yeah. Are you okay? Whoops. Okay, we're going to move on to our 816 uh, agenda raven, which is a minor modification request for 3341617, three cursey circle. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Good evening. Nice to Good. see you in person. Nice to yes, you. I know, right? Yeah, that's right. We haven't seen you in person. Well. Huh? Uh, Dave Bauer, yeah. three cursey circle. So tell us what you're changing. Uh, well, actually hoping for both uh, approval of the minor modification and uh, certificate of compliance tonight. Um, the, we uh, finished the project and ran into a couple field issues that I uh, wanted to uh, go over with you and um, include as a modification. Um, the first one being, uh, if you recall, uh, the pool which was being placed in the middle of our existing lawn encroached into the 30 foot uh, buffer and or I should say part of the patio and you can see that on my approved plan uh, about 70 square feet of patio and fence encroached into the 30 foot buffer and my approval included um, sort of a trade off of that encroachment to be approximately 70 square feet of um, expanded um, uh, wetland area I guess I would say by moving the border fence the split rail fence um, you can see that just to the right of the pool on the approved plan by moving that uh, brown split rail fence in towards the lawn to give back that 70 square feet that was my approval and that was the intention um, there was really one key issue that I ran into during the project um, if, if you remember when we um, had our hearing there was a request for me to do what I could about moving the equipment further away from the wetlands however I could, the pool equipment, the pump and such. And we, that was one of the first things we did is we did push the pool vendor to place that equipment, uh, equipment further away from the wetlands. Um, and what we found out afterwards is that the fireplace that we then built after that could not go over the plumbing that ran to that equipment. So by moving the equipment one way, it kind of flipped the fireplace another way and if you look at the before and after plans you'll see how the two things kind of flipped the um, pool equipment went further from the wetlands and the fireplace flipped uh, in order again to not conflict with the plumbing that runs underneath uh, the fireplace kind of flipped closer to the wetland I didn't appreciate at the time that that was going to then kind of shift everything that goes around the fireplace so the patio the fence and the, the layout of everything kind of shifted a bit with the fireplace and resulted in uh, instead of 70 plus or minus 174 square feet uh, of impact within that buffer. Um, unrelated to that, when I had the fence moved, um, I directed them to just move it further than, um, significantly further than I needed to in hopes that I would be coming back, um, just surprising you with, you know, giving back three or four times more than I was obligated to. It turns out that happens to be um, an offset to this field issue um, such that instead of giving back 70 square feet, I'm giving back 332 square feet. So with those issues all kind of becoming apparent with the as-built, because I didn't really fully appreciate it until the surveyor calculated the square footage for me, this is where I landed, that, um, that encroachment Again, within my previous lawn, the encroachment instead of 70 became 174, and the um, buffer, the uh, um, wetland area restoration or resource restoration, as it's called up there in the plan, instead of 70 became 332. Um, so I certainly do apologize that I didn't deliver uh, what was on the plan, but um, that's how that's how it unfolded um, as the project. Um, and the second issue is, uh, as you see on the plan, there's a 
um, previous crushed stone uh, path that I um, built there as a way to um, complete and stabilize that area that wraps around the pool. And the reasoning for that was um, the pool enclosure is, is just that. It's an enclosure with a safety fence. And whether it be kids or guests who are outside of the pool season when the cover's on, the way to travel around my property is to go through the gate that's located at the bottom of the plan from the front yard and around the pool area to the backyard. And I recognize from previous experience that whether it be kid traffic or mowers or whatever, they, there's a tendency for you know footprints or ruts or whatever, especially during the wet season, that can become um, muddy. And so I wanted to give the kids um, and their friends a pathway that would not erode and rut out and potentially be a, a mud issue right along the wetland. So, I thought that was a proactive solution to just um, avoid any kind of um, sediment type problem um, from that path. And, and uh, Matt inspected that with me this morning. It's a crushed stone compacted path that has gone through the past week or so of heavy rains and it's in solid shape and um, has held up nicely. Other than that, the whole project came together as planned and um, it's 100% complete. I really made the effort to show Matt a totally complete project from every aspect of uh, landscaping, stabilization, everything's done, erosion controls are out, and I, I am requesting a certificate of compliance uh, tonight. Well, the, the, the issue here is that, you know, you should have come back, especially, I, I understand the, the encroachment, you know, inside the 30 up by the pool area, but to put that path in, you, you really should have come back before us and requested that before you did it. Yeah, that path is like, is an issue so again it, it is instead of sod it is um, a material that won't erode so um, I'm you know I'm sorry I didn't ask for permission but I thought I was being proactive to not do something that was going to have a tendency to erode and release mud sediment well, into well, the level you know it's part of the process and anytime you make you have a set of plans and, you, and you've got an order of conditions that follow those plans and so anytime you want to um, go off those plans you really need to get approval and and that's why we have a mechanism so you come in and you can get approval for minor changes um, and, and we really don't like doing it after the fact well, the, it seems the, like the problem with that path is it's so close to the wetlands it's like and, within 15 feet yeah I know we just normally and don't a allow and we any wouldn't kind allow of, that anywhere any kind of uh, anything to happen that close to the wetlands so I don't know. The, the rest of the board can chime in on. I this. mean, I would uh, I would approve what he's done without the that crushed stone pathway, but I can't see, you know, issuing an order and and saying he's in compliance with that there because it wasn't part of the original proposal. It was an after the fact. And you're right. He could have come back, and 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 made a request, but we wouldn't have approved it. That's that's always been lawn area there. That's correct. I agree with Eric. Matt, when you were um, taking a look at this, the split rail fence outside the restoration area, I, I remember from our visit, we were seeing cat and nine tails coming up through the lawn, and so we felt that was a great place to add it. Are any of the um, wetland species showing up in the vicinity of the? I don't um, think, uh, when did you move that? Walkway. I, I haven't seen any coming up, sorry, where were you? By the, uh, I know they were in the, in the restoration area, so. Oh, that, that yes, was, I mean, that's, that's I mean, it's a very well vegetated okay. kind of Are any of the, are any that. of the um, wetland plants growing in the vicinity of the crushed stone path? In, in that section, I, I you didn't take didn't, any I didn't, notice? Yeah, I, didn't. I, didn't I can tell you they're not, the cattails. I noticed the cattails. But they were back here. Yes. But I didn't notice anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not. There. I don't yeah. remember any of that far away. Either. Well, and one of the concerns that I've had, because I've seen it elsewhere where crushed stone has been put down for a path, is over time it gets incorporated into the soil. And so, you know, as, as it goes down and, and dirt comes on top of it and maybe vegetation grows, I wouldn't want to see fresh gravel being put down to, you know, to perpetuate that path. And I think, you know, that's another 
that's another thing that concerns me about the location of this path going forward. And is, also, okay. go ahead. The maintenance of that path, are you planning on um, keeping it gravel or like with the grass or whatever grows underneath it or around it? Are you planning on? I, I was planning it? on, um, you know, I have lawn that I've planted, sodded right up to it. Um, and there's existing vegetation on the other side of it, and I was going to let it be in that state. And over time, I expected vegetation to sort of encroach on it, but again, to give a path that would prevent the foot traffic from going all over. And, um, you know, again, th I thought it was um, a proactive approach, but if you'd, if you'd like me to flip it back to lawn and, and go from there, that's. I can approve this if he flips it back to lawn. But I can't approve this the way it currently is. Sadly. Does the commission uh, feel that way? Ian? Yeah. Margaret? Yes. 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 Jim? Yes. yes. Back to lawn. It is what it is. That's fine. Yep. Okay. So uh, uh, put that back to lawn and, and, come back for a and then, you know, we'll have them go down once you uh, get it back into condition. Mm -hmm. And we'll issue the and uh, we'll do it. certificate, okay? And so there is a form to request the certificate of compliance. I can email that to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, just so you have it. And it's right. two pages. Sorry for the and, misunderstanding. And, no, that's fair enough. So I just, uh, we need to approve that, his mind, this minor change that he made to the pool area. Okay, for the record. Yeah, we can approve that. Okay, so can I have a motion to that effect to approve the changes he's made? Um, to the area of the pool. A motion. I'll do the second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's for the record. Okay. Yep. So you're going to remove that path. We'll do. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Okay, we got 825 yet. There we go. Okay, we're going to move on to our 825 public hearing for Murphy, 53 Forest Road. This is a legal notice under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Wetlands Non Zoning, Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171, Western Conservation Committee, Hall Park Hall Hearing on Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, at 825 p.m., Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, on the request for termination of applicability of application of Amy and Lee Murphy for the construction of an above ground pool within 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland at 53 Forest Road. Assessor's Map 77, Parcel 25. Welcome. Hi, I'm Amy Murphy. Um, I'm requesting a permission to put an above ground pool in the um, L shape of the in law apartment we have in the main house. So, the closest point to the wetland to the, this above ground pool is 55, so they're clearly meeting the setback. Yep. Um, so, I don't see it. it's on existing lawn. Yep. Yes. Looks, Looks good. Existing lawn. Well, What's um, from it? We don't see grade lines here. So from the level where the pool would be down to the wetland, is it is it sloped or is it completely flat? It's flat, and then there's we have landscaping, and then it drops into okay. the woods down to the wetland. Okay. Wetlands. Okay. So Any special good. flushing or anything that you were concerned about? Well, I, I, having pool, had or? an above ground pool, okay. we had issues where every now and then there was a tear in the liner, and then all of a sudden. You know, water would come out. And it's where does the water flow, and that would be the only place that I would. We did talk to Rogers Pool, and that a silt fence, if we need to, put in okay. that area down by the driveway. That that's yeah, the only, and, and it would have to travel, but that's the little slope. Okay. To the driveway. Well, they're gonna they're gonna dig it out, and it's gonna be on on gravel too, right? So there'll be some yeah. some stuff there. This is all. Fun. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Motion to approve. So. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank Good. you. Okay. You <laughs> have been sitting here all night. Yeah. It's okay. I have a nine-year-old who's like, any word, any word. So he's <laughs> Jim McCall. He's very excited. Awesome. Thank you very much. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. In your pool. Thank you. All right. We can move on to our eight thirty. It's an appointment with uh, Robert Graciani, thirty-seven Low Road, for a potential garage. Did we close the public? Oh area? yeah. Let's close that public hearing. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Was it a conditional negative or a negative? Just a negative. No okay. conditions, right? No, none on that. Just making my notes. Yep. Be good like that. Come on up. Save me from having to rely on my memory. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the way I am too. 
So tell us what you want to do. Well, what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to uh, push the back. Of, so I don't know if we have a picture we did. Yeah. I'd like to push out the um, back of the house, part of the back of the house, um, 12 feet to make the kitchen a little bit bigger. Uh, it's a very small kitchen right now. And uh, I would have liked to have built straight up on top of the garage and just put a second floor on that. Uh, however, the foundation for that is not um, strong enough to support it. So I'd like to tear that down and put one on. So was it on a slab do. now and you need a more structurally sound foundation to do a second floor over the garage? Yes. It's, it's on a slab, but there's foundation underneath it, just not enough. Not enough. Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but when I talked to um, a builder about doing it and lining things up, he basically suggested um, two things. One, making it a little bit bigger to support having a, a mudroom right now, the way the garage attaches to the house. There's a basically a, a three, uh, three feet to 40 inch wide sort of breezeway that you go up the steps and go into. And so he said to really make that work, he was gonna make, he needed to make it wider. Just make it more open, yeah. And then the roof lines, to make the roof lines line up, he said he may need to shift it back. So I haven't gone to the point of having full plans drawn out yet because I want to know what's. Kind of looking at an envelope. Yes, that's exactly it. To understand where, where yeah, things are. Yeah, and then you can shift within the envelope. That, that's okay. the hope. Um, and then the only other part is, and I don't know that uh, I could afford these things, uh, all of them. <laughs> but what I'd like to be able to do is the, the deck that, uh, the um, kitchen that pushes out to the back, I'd like to put a deck onto the side of it along the back of the house. There's currently a, um, a sunroom that's there on the back, and it would basically, the sunroom would get taken out in that case, and the deck would go over it. But again, I'm, I'm trying to put the end no, together but I think and see the what fits. Vision of things that you would like to do. It's probably best that you share that vision with us so we can see what you have up in mind, so we can kind of look at it and say, okay, you know, this is, we can go here, and this is kind of beyond where we can go. Yeah, and that's really what it is, is to yeah. redo the garage because um, it can't just build up and then push 12 feet back. So this, is this really considered a perennial strain? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask him, is it? I, I, I haven't. Oop. On the GIS map? Uh, did, you, did you look on the, on the maps? Is it really um, listed? GIS shows I, it all in the river. I anecdotally yeah. know it as GIS, uh, being a perennial strain. So be, because he's in that riverfront, I know. he really needs to stay within the footprint of what he's got, right? Well, if it's really perennial, he can't really do any additional alteration within the 100, can he? Because it's only 10% outside, you know. But, well, but if, he's, if he's staying within that footprint of the original footprint of the foundation of the house, he can replace He can go the, up, but I don't he, know if he can go expand. Out. Right, exactly, right. But the garage is there, so he he can. Yeah, but he's looking at at, at expanding that garage, yeah. opening it up. Right. Oh. It is perennial. It is perennial. I mean, so I mean, the other difficulty I think is I can't really do. I can't touch the footprint in any other way. Is really what it comes down to. Because I can't go towards the other side because I'm up against yeah, the like building line. Lots in the river front yeah. area. Yeah. Right. So I can't go anywhere <laughs> except. Backwards and sideways. I think that's a, that's not even us. That's the state. Yeah, because the state's going to look at this because it's a perennial stream. You're inside the hundred, and it's really pretty tight. Unless, uh, I mean, even if we granted it, I think the state would say no. Yeah, you really got to stay within the footprint of what you got. I mean, all they could do is maybe come up with information to show that it's not perennial, it's intermittent, and therefore, you know, that would give him the ability to, do, you know, to do an expansion. But if it is perennial, then he's stuck with to his existing footprint. Well, if it is, but would it be the option, for example, where he's got impervious surface for his driveway? Would would the riverfront, would the state regulations allow him to? 
replace potentially what, swap out and just say you have a certain amount of impervious surface i don't care what you do with it it just has yeah, to yeah is if if for example instead of pushing out to the back if he pushed out to the front and took some of the the paved driveway does because it's replacing impervious with impervious is is that something that the state would i don't think out? he can push out to the front i think he's saying that he needs to push out to the back right i i think it's I have, to, I have to go research whether I can push out to the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that the only place I could push out to the front would be on the driveway because the front yeah. middle to left is where the septic is and right. the building lines. The, the, the only other thought I have is if he has an impervious driveway and he made it pervious and, and reduced the footprint that way and then he did an addition a little bit out the back he might he might be closer to the to the perennial stream but in essence he's reduced the amount of um, impervious area because he turns an impervious driveway into a pervious driveway right and that would be considered uh, riverfront restoration yeah, yeah. so yeah, overall he could say it would be a net benefit maybe yeah that's the only other way i could th yeah. i could see it happening yeah yeah it's a tough one just food for thought. Okay. How would it, can I do anything from a debt perspective? Is that also considered as part of this? Like, so one of the thoughts was to sort of put a deck on the back. Is the deck going to well, be? Well, if the deck was on sauna tubes, I think he'd probably be okay because he's not increasing any impervious surface. Right. Yeah. He'd probably get away with that. So I think the deck could be fine. Yeah. It'd be sitting on sauna tube, right? Off the ground. Yeah. You're going to have to do an alternatives analysis too. So, but this could serve as your alternative. In other words, if you can go out the front, you go out the front. You can put the deck on, and then this is the alternative, which is unacceptable. Okay. Okay. It, it's just how the regs are written. You have to submit yeah. an alternative analysis. And and the distance from the stream is 100 feet. Uh, that I'd, I'd have I to within the be feet. Well, okay. is, is, it actually governs the first 200 feet <coughs> okay. so it's usually no disturbance within 100, 100 feet. feet of a perennial uh, uh, unless and only 10 percent alteration in the basically the outer riparian from 100 to 200 yeah. and, and you're within the 100 so you know what Peter's saying is okay you really can't alter the footprint of the building the structure you could go up but you couldn't alter it so then we were just talking about maybe if you did away with your impervious driveway right. made it pervious and then had other areas that were impervious that you wanted to do your expansion ultimately you would still have a site that had more permeable ground or you know more permeability than it once did because you reduced the impermeability by removing your per your impermeable driveway Okay. Would it help to have that in plain English? <laughs> no, I, no. I, I, you, you can't I, do anything within the first 100, 100 feet unless it's some kind of uh, riverfront restorative uh, project. Okay. So in other words, when they have all these old buildings along the canals, like up in Lowell, they can work on those buildings because what they're doing is they're within 100 feet, but they're making the situation better to the riverfront. Okay. Okay. There's an overall net benefit, right? And that's how it's usually presented to us. So if you were doing something, but in what you were doing, it re basically reduced the impervious surface. It might show an overall net benefit. So if I went and so a driveway that's still not tarred, but you know, rock and dirt driveway is. I mean, if you had a gravel driveway instead of an asphalt driveway, a gravel driveway would be pervious. It would let pavers. water trickle down through it. It doesn't have to be dirty, either. it's pervious pavers. Yeah, there are pervious pavers as well. Okay. So I could potentially put that in um, the driveway part of it, and that would then maybe let me. Maybe compensate for something else that you may want to try to do. Okay. Just throwing it out there. It's yeah. And a lot of work. You need to yeah, it. it takes a little bit of work, but overall, if you can demonstrate there's a, that there's that net benefit, um, 
it may be permissible. Is it a one for one square footage trade typically, or do I need to do a better than one for one trade? I think it's one for one. If I added a 12 by 12. I, I would say, you know, it. it, it if you can give more than one to one, you should because you really want to demonstrate what you do is overall going to have a, a, a net benefit. If it's just an, an equal trade off, then there's no benefit, and you're ultimately going to be closer to the stream with what you're proposing. So somebody might look at that and say, I'm not really seeing the benefit here. And the state's looking at this, right? Yeah, the state. Will yeah, I mean, you're, you're trying to make it compelling. Harder. Okay. So you have a lot of homework. With a maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's homework, and there's also, in the end, is it really worth it, right? Because what it really I've comes down to. I've seen a lot of nice paved driveways. I, but yeah, it's, it's, it's become more you complex. Know, yeah, I mean, you know, right. it all comes down to the dollars and cents, regardless. Right. That's yeah. what I mean. Is is it worth it to do that to get, you know, even if I just did the, the, the I can't kitchen tell you part. what the enjoyment of the, your home is worth to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This also would have never been built. Yeah. In today's, you know, going back yeah. even 20 years, it would have never been built. So. Okay. But at least we're trying to give you some options yeah. that you can explore. Right. That, that's what I'm looking. And that's, that's what, what this is all about. Coming to. And, and thank right. you for coming and having yeah. a conversation yeah. rather yeah. than I mean, talk, talk right. again if you needed it, or you know what I mean. Okay. Or, you know. Well, yeah, I would probably want to talk again when I. Re Flushed resort out yeah. resort yeah. things out again, yeah. right? So we'd be willing to I, do that. I, I think, f f so from the sound of it, um, if I did do everything I was describing, the trade would be that um, the driveway would become a paved, uh, not a non paved driveway. Uh, it, would it would become pervious versus per impervious, right? It would become pervious. Um, so I have to go research that, but that would more or less probably allow things. Some things, I don't know how much. Um, to go. The deck is separate, it sounds like, from from this. Is that, or from the perviousness, or is that still built in? I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't think that the state would, would I mean, that's reject existing, this because that's of existing the deck. Lawn, right? but, yeah, it's not an well, existing lawn, but so, it's Well, existing so there's, lawn. there's already an existing um, sunroom that's there that's as part of it. Right. right, so that part would, Go away, and there would be some. That would probably go back to. That might be a trade. Um, pervious uh, lawn wouldn't be lawn, right? Because it's under a deck, right? But it would be ground. Um, they can try it. I mean, I, I mean, they really, they're really pretty. It's going to be tough, but I mean, you the, really the have to demonstrate the the overall improvement, you know, yeah. and, and that's the only way that I, I, I've seen it work. Okay, I'm looking for. You know, guardrails, boundaries. So, so, so if I think about it, I, I can think about them that way. Um, okay. Um, any other um, options that I would have? So, you see, so everything would be fine if I wanted to go up and I could go up on existing yeah. foundations. Yeah, on your, uh, right. right. Yeah. Or even a new foundation. Yeah, on a new foundation, but the same. Foundation. Same footprint. Same footprint. Okay. So there's not as much concern. I mean, there's probably silt fences and things like that to put up when construction goes on, but there's nothing beyond that that's that's a big driver, or are there? No, I don't think so. The, the erosion control measure we'd have you put in place as part of the, the construction activity, but um, that I mean, wouldn't be an still, issue. You still have to do the alternative analysis. Yeah. That's probably that, the, the most work that you got to do. Okay. Is there something somewhere that uh, written that tells me what the alternative analysis is. Yeah. <laughs> I can find, yeah, I'll find yeah. the instructions. Usually it is, I propose this, but it, it wouldn't work if I put it here or here or here, and this is why. You know, oh, okay. I'm here because of a reason. You know, I'm here because I'm constrained for some, for various reasons in this location, this location, or this location. Okay. And that's the alternative. Why the location that you pick is the location it needs to be. Okay. Yeah. Quick follow-up question: Is it worth having it evaluated whether the stream is indeed perennial? Uh, you can do that, but it's going to cost you some dough because you're gonna, now, now you're going to have to hire a wetland scientist. Okay. There's only certain times of the year you can do this. 
Uh, yeah, you need it. It's four consecutive days of no flow conditions documented. Um, any four within a calendar year. Yeah, it can't be within a drought period. Yeah, not and I can tell you with all the rain. Not the <laughs> yeah, I know. you're not. I mean, when I've seen it happen, <laughs> they try to sneak it in just before we they officially call a drought. And I swear there's that little window where they ca try to catch those four days. And um, I yeah, I'm thinking it's not going to work for you. Okay. Yeah, Certainly not this year. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the one coming out of. So. Um, okay. Um, down pro from Providence Road. Um, One other sort of silly question. Um, as you were mentioning, that um, the state governs certain things. So from an approval perspective, I would come back, probably ask more questions, and then... Yeah, you would, you would bring this before us under a notice of intent under both the uh, Wetlands Protection uh, no, Act and the local wetlands by <laughs> the town of Westford. And then, the, you the know, whatever problem. happens, oh, okay. you know, we... we, we Hopefully, come to a, deter a positive Fun determination, yeah. and okay. you know we issue no, our, Sorry. you know, our findings. But then the state gets to, yeah, yeah, approve or disprove it at that well, point. They, they the state would they review are, our determination. Yeah. Right. So they they would then review what we had approved. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't like to tell us up front. What they think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but they no. just don't. No, Not usually. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I work for the okay. department. I yeah, can understand. Right you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Great time. Sorry, it took a little longer, probably than. Yep. No, no, that's fine. I yeah. hey, I'd much rather have you come in and have this discussion now, like this, while we can all chat about it. Because I'd hate to see you waste your your time and money putting something together and then having to tell you after the fact that it's this isn't gonna fly. Okay. okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, what's left of these discussion of Zoning Board Appeal applications? Yes. So the Zoning Board of Appeals is going to have a busy next Wednesday night. They have nine public hearings on their agenda. And, um, or, yeah, Jeff nine. Was Jeff was groaning at the window. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's that's going to be a. Um, so there are three. Um, any that aren't that don't have that aren't within proximity to wetlands don't have will not have an impact to wetland resource areas. I've already submitted comments um, saying you know they're not subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and the bylaw based upon the plans provided. Um, the ones in the plan or in the agenda um, are showing are projects that are within wetland resource areas adjacent to wetland resource areas. Um, some of them I just wanted you guys to see what's coming down the pipeline you know if you know such as um, the I think the second one on Burn Ave um, you know that's you know a tear down of an existing cottage and a rebuild I mean that's going to have to you know that's going gonna need Board of Health with a septic um, again it was more just for your kind of yep. to educate you guys what's coming in the future um, and then there's others you know such as this um, 12 Bridge Street um, they're not going to build anything not, no but we did issue an order of condition I mean there was the order of conditions and the certificate of compliance that was issued back December because Carol was still um, here um, and there are some you know conding, continuing conditions that I want to just make them aware I think it's make them aware of again let you guys know that you know there are things going on around town and I am acting on your you know in your best interest for Good. especially to these other boards because we don't want again as you know discussed with the previous uh, homeowner it's better to have these discussions up front make them aware I mean more often than not when people are filing with the local attorneys and engineers you know they're 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 familiar with the rules and regs of the of the town and the commission um, but you know some of these are you know homeowners that you know they're just I mean this woman seeking a variance for a use that wouldn't you know as Jim said that's not changing anything but I mean I mean with that also being said she's looking to put in an Okinawan style um, garden and the previous owner between the main residence and the kind of auxiliary uh, personal training space had a garden and kept bees so 
you know, he's, I, I feel like they're converting one guard into a, 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 one type of guard into another type of garden. And that is, you know, I, I think within the spirit and the regulations of both the Wetlands Protection Act, you know, they're planting, they're, you know, they're maintaining something as, um, but I just wanted, again, the commission to see some of these, um, um, and you know, as that one was previously um, had the certificate order of conditions and certificate of compliance issued with it, um, you can actually see the guard in here and the photos yeah, on exactly. the screen. Um, the again, the recon demolition reconstruction of a non-conforming, you know, little uh, cottage in Nab with a larger residence. That's going to ultimately come before the commission. You know, there's, it's, I mean, it's. So usually, you know, when you get that tiny little shack in there and they and they want to, you know, tear it down and rebuild. I mean, let's say it's a. Uh, they allowed them to two two to one. Say if it was a thousand square feet, would they allow them to build two thousand? Um, I mean, I think as proposed. I forget what. I'm just curious as to, you know, there's got to be a limitation when you tear something down as, you know, to what you can put up in, in what I would consider to be a non-conforming lot. I, I mean, I, it's, lot. It's, it's a very small lot. Um, I forget what they exist. I think it's 900 um, square feet and they're proposing. I didn't think they were opposing anything at this point. Yeah, yeah I don't they think were trying to figure out what they years. want to build. Right, right. I think, I I think it's just kind of I mean, a general. In, in, in general, you know, I'm trying to, you yeah. know, when somebody comes in and they want to be closer to a resource area or something like this, but, you know, if they have a pre existing structure that's X, but, you know, if the new plan is to build 3X or whatever, it's like, well, yeah, you know, and why, 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 why does the resource area get shortchanged? So I mean, there's I mean, they're well, increasing our history state because it, it's always it's got a septic system someplace that oh I know it's going to be in, probably within a hundred feet of the lake. Oh, so I, I get that. Yeah, I mean they're they're proposing usually they only allow them to build so big. I mean you have so many bedrooms, but you can only increase the structure by a certain percentage if you're in a non-conforming lot. Yeah, I mean, and that's, a, I think, I mean, they're proposing is, was it 27? I don't think the Board of Health will let them increase the size of the septic. No, they won't. So if it's for no, 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 a lot. Two, for a two-bedroom, then that's how it's going to well, stay. Yeah, yeah, but still, you know, somebody can build a 3,000-square-foot two-bedroom yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. We see that all the time. We do, I know. In the next one, the, the Lacoma property. Yes. So that's got that's got two buildings on the, on it. They want to split it off. And they want to split it and make the garage a new residence. But we, does it have two septic systems? No. 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 They're right. proposing a new septic. Yeah. yeah. But, so how is that? And, but the question I also had is because will that septic be able to meet the setbacks to everybody's septic and everything like that, or are we going to Private all of a sudden well. looking at? Or, or are we compromising ship? somebody else's? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, 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 and well, that, that's a question. Is also are they even on, are they on town water or private well? Because the last thing we want to do is say yes, and then all of a sudden, oh, we've got a hardship because we can't meet setbacks for septics or stuff like that. We see that we see that problem on Long Sought for. We've had that in the past with people on private wells. Yeah. Okay. No. Again, I I, I I'm, yep. I'm I'm glad that we're having this because you know I can send these to the um, send these to the zoning board as you know. We discussed them, and here's you know our concern. Here's here's the concerns. You know, again, McDonald's putting in a drive-through, and outside of the, you know, there is portions of that. If they do activity, if they do activities, you know, <laughs> how how do they get that in there? I thought we already just said no drive-through. Right, but now they're at that, that was a specific bylaw to permit them. Okay, you you can you can actually get a drive-through now with. With CBA approval, but they're not going to approve it. With the variance, no. right? But, and but so they, they're not going to approve it. So. And to, when I looked at the plan, it's they're losing like ten or twelve parking spaces so they can put in the drive-through. Right, craziness. Uh. Right. So any again, more more so for this one, any work you know within that buffer zone is going to be subject to the commission's jurisdiction. Right. Any work on the lot, you know, they have these catch basins that go to detention um, areas, um, as shown. Um, you know, there's the uh, yeah 
catch basins and you know head walls rip rap so there's a there there's stormwater structures there which are going which are going towards the wetland so again while tangentially uh, related to the commission's jurisdiction uh, just wanted you everybody to see yeah, it appreciate it like to see what's going yeah, on it's good to know yeah, gonna be busy. Um, and then last but not least um, the Avalon or uh, they currently Avalon Avalon Bay um, wants to put in like a 200 and something um, kilowatt uh, photovoltaic array yep. on, Large, top on top of the leaching their, field their leaching field um, so it and it is within or half of the existing field is within natural heritage mapped habitat oh. so um, there are no wetlands there aren't any mapped wetlands I wasn't able to see anything like that or at least in kind of where they're proposing to put it um, but again depending it, on what it is they may say it, 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 it enhances habitat right again it's not you know it's it's again natural heritage is and I've learned not to question natural heritage and to make sure that you get their approvals you know in, the, in a former life always get their approvals first because they can shut down projects very very quickly um, so I mean if they're discussing again the extent of my comments will likely be this project is you know located within natural heritage ha mapped habitat and you know what is their determination on this because that's um, and based on the construction of the leaching field I mean these things sit on concrete pads I'm not sure what the weight of it is but is that having any bearing on the leaching field itself yeah as far that, as putting a load on the on the field so it's a mass DEP approved facility uh, the wastewater treatment facility so it's that's you know up to their review and yeah. approval so because um, Board of Health you know chimed in with something because typically if it was a septic system it, you know a residential the septic only system, other thing I'll throw out is um, you know a lot of communities are seeing proposals for photovoltaic array um, on fields a lot in central Massachusetts and what the state is finding out is um, the cost uh, to decommission let's say 20 years from now um, you know the state yeah. does like 70,000 to 90,000 uh, per megawatt AC so it's based on you know generation but um, some entities are having difficulty getting rid of the old panels because the coatings they're not sure what the coatings are and some of them are, are considered like um, a hazardous waste potentially so um, the cost to decommission these can get very expensive have they considered putting these on top of town buildings like all the schools and the town hall and solar panels I mean uh, of a field? I mean they can lease it and they can own it but I mean, I mean Walmart does yeah, I mean, and I, 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 I'll bring that up to the, you know, uh, well, the town it, has something already, don't they? Don't I they think have they're looking to do it on another the schools. array. Yeah. There was some, or if they weren't looking to get it approved at town meeting, or maybe it was on a select board agenda. I don't remember. Um, but there is, there, there is, you know, ex, there's a pilot program to start it. Um, I mean, and also, I mean, you see other uh, police departments. You know, they have, you know, the kind of mounted arrays over you know so the it's, it's half half uh, solar voltaic, voltaic generation half um, cover for the police cruisers um, I, and again I'll you know make sure to pass that along to the appropriate powers in town hall about you know going forward to you know exploring that but I mean that's well just if the town it's well, not the town the has ownership life. So, I mean, ultimately, it's the, um, the applicant who would have the responsibility for decommissioning oh, right. that. For this, yes. Oh, yeah. yes, definitely. But, but this gets into, they go bankrupt. They, you know, is, they go, you, you look at all the. Well, the, that's why we, that's why this. And all those sites where companies went out of business and they just walked away with it and you've still well, got that's why the, the state has financial assurance for these things on private sites you know and mm -hmm. like I said it's like 70,000 per megawatt AC um, if you have a post closure financial assurance for the facility and if there's nothing out there it's 90,000 per megawatt AC 
And I can tell you that doesn't even that doesn't even cover disposal of the panels. And we're not even thinking, and, and that's so I'm what not it, looking what at it as being a waste. Years from now. Yeah. How so. scary is that? Yeah, the next round of Superfund sites. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, you never know. It's just panels are constructed differently. You, okay. you know, you don't know what the chemicals no, no. are. When you look at PFAS and you look at Forever Chemicals, and a lot of that stuff is, you know, films and plasticizers and things like that. And Asbestos used to be the greatest product ever. It's in your brake linings. So. When I was young. Yeah. yeah. Then you learn. I don't know. Just in the miscellaneous stuff from the kind of, there was the uh, notice to claim appeal um, from the resident group at 11 Brookside. Brookside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you made it to the very end of that appeal and all their exhibits, um, there was a four page uh, response from. DEP looking for more uh, definite um, definite of show cause or, uh, uh, order for more definite statement and to show cause why appeal should not be dismissed so just wanted to keep everybody up to date after, after Jim you know stirred the hornet's nest and brought it up a couple months ago about what was going on with this there's been a flurry of activity and where uh, you know, just again, want everybody to know that things are happening and keep you guys in the loop. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Has anybody on the commission uh, survived a uh, appeal through this number of layers? I have not. I've only been one superseding order of conditions, never an appeal of that. Oh, Randolph Circle. We actually got it when it went to. It actually went to court, and we still were upheld. So that's. Yeah, but that's happened, I think, once or twice. Once with our, because well, it's been our, our local wetlands bylaw in Randolph Circle, they upheld our well, local wetlands bylaw when yeah, it was appealed. Yeah. But uh, have we ever had the, the state appeal? Appealed. I, that's what I mean. I've never uh, seen it. That's what you're oh. talking oh. about, yeah, right? Yeah, because we're, we're at the local point local now where the residents are appealing to the, the, the state. state's decision. Right, right correct. <sighs> and I can't remember one. No. I, I can't remember one that that they appealed the state decision. No, but it's there. They have the ability to do so. So you know, I'm sure they take that avenue. Is the town keeping our uh, town council involved? I, I, I mean, we're not doing anything right now with it. But just well, usually, just usually to make district, them aware. The, the local bylaw and district court usually waits to see what the state issues. Okay. okay? And he'll probably agree with this, but usually, if the state issues a finding, the local usually just goes by. Oh, exactly, yeah. Because they're the experts. You know what I mean? Right. Well, you you perceive them to be. <laughs> um, one last thing to get signed is the emergency certificate. Emergency, you don't get to sign. I can't sign. You don't get to sign. I don't get to sign. There you go. Sign that. Okay. okay. All right. Sign that. Eric. Okay. What? Do you know how we shut this down? Close the, you close close the screen. Close the screen. Wow. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.